And we're recording. Hello, welcome to the uh, Package Managers Weekly Sync for our special interest group um, for May the 7th, 2019. I am Aiken Brain. I will be your host in the game of what we did last week, what we're doing this week and what we're blocked on. Uh, I will go first. So last week um, I was trying to work on some uh, like the conversion of the Unix FS importer for JS IPFS uh, from callbacks to async await. Um, that's still ongoing because, uh, yeah, it's mostly done. Uh, the last kind of piece of the puzzle is the trickle dag importer. And I think uh, there are some incompatibilities between JS and Go. So I'm trying to bring the JS implementation in line with Go. Um, but it's meant trying to run all the interrupt tests, which means then integrating everything with JS IPFS as well, uh, which would have been the next step of what I was doing, um, which I'm having to do with this step um, because the yeah, the algorithms look different, which is a bit weird. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to be me. Um, also tomorrow I'm going to be working on the uh, um, the lib P2P workshop um, with Jacob for IPFS camp. Um, yeah, and I am out on Thursday uh, for some personal business. Uh, which, you know, I'm not going to talk about here, but if you're interested, hit me up privately. Um, yep, that is me. That's my update. Andrew, you are next. Good day. Uh, so last week I spent quite a lot of time researching uh, different elements and challenges involved in decentralized publishing. Uh, this was inspired by a call we had that I'm not sure I can talk about publicly yet, but uh, it should be talkable, aboutable in uh, a couple of weeks, I think, once the, uh, once the public announcement is made. But basically, I uh, kind of went fairly deep into what would be involved in making decentralized publishing for a given package manager possible and some of the challenges and some of the different kind of opening the the many doors of what different routes you could take what things you might get as benefits and comparing and contrasting that with more centralized existing uh systems i don't really have a conclusion yet which was requested um almost as soon as i'd published it uh, so definitely uh, gonna spend some time this week uh, kind of polishing that off. I might move it out from being a GitHub issue and put it into an actual uh, file in the repository for like continued improvements and pull requests, etc. rather than it just being uh, an issue. But it feels like that was a good place to put it initially to get, see if there was any discussion. If anyone wants to talk through any of that, then I'm, I'm free all week to uh, to kind of drill down on any bits that I haven't been clear. Uh, I also did a little visualization of Eric's cladistic uh, decision tree of IPFS support. Uh, let me just try and share my screen real quick. How does, Let's see if this works. There we go. Uh, so this is literally kind of a copy paste of the Textual content uh, is linked in the, the notes for this call um, of Eric's issue that he wrote up, uh, but trying to visualize it as a decision tree rather than as a nested pile of unordered lists. Uh, definitely a lot of scope here to, to expand and there's more um, decisions that can be kind of put in or multiple answers rather than just yes, no's. Uh, and then the two kind of dangly uh, options right at the bottom uh, have a lot more different pathways to go from, especially based on the decentralized publishing um, research that I did last week. I also wanted to try and tease out some of the decision paths that different categories of package managers would take. So a file system based uh, Linux package manager would take a, a fairly different path through than a say um, an npm kind of centralized database backed registry uh, and to try and kind of highlight where the happy paths are for so that people can almost um, have a rather than a choose your own adventure it's almost like well 
what are the attributes of your package manager? This naturally leads you down this path. Uh, here are the bits that you're missing. And then that kind of leads to some interesting points of um, discussion for people to go investigating. Uh, but that's also open for anyone else to edit. Uh, I've put a link to the mural in there if anyone wants to dive in and add stuff. Um, and was there anything else? Also, just wanted to mention that the uh, a new version of WAPM shipped uh, like 12 hours ago, which does contain my pull request uh, to add in the ability to specify a particular version when you install it. Um, but that basically, it's... It's really only interesting because that means uh, they're now kind of removed all of the initial things that were in the way of them starting to look at IPFS integration. So now they're diving into that more. I followed up with someone, I forget who it was, uh, this morning. And I imagine there's going to be a lot of back and forwards on that uh, fairly soon, which is good. Uh, and then next week, this week even, sorry. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do was to write up some ideas I was thinking about over the weekend on localized package data, but I won't go into that now. If we have time at the end of the call, then I'll, uh, I'll kind of expand on it a little bit. Um, yeah, so I think that's, that's it. Jessica? Sorry, you probably hear a coffee grinder. I apologize in advance. Um, let me see. Um, so I've, um, so I went through and diagrammed out, um, the audience segments and their pre IPFS enhanced pain points and their existing communications channels. So this, um, is all in a mural doc, which I can share my screen. Um, if I can find my screen on a single screen to share, <laughs> let's see here. Let's try that guy. See what that gets me. Oh, come on. Um, forgive me. I was supposed to be somewhere other than stranded by the side of the road right now. Um, so, um, so I did walk through this. This reflects on. Um, uh, this was Andrew's original pain points document, which I've gone ahead and segmented out um, by topical areas by the three main audience segments of um, package consumers, package publishers, and then package manager maintainers. As you can see, um, the topical grouping leads us to, to um, be more aware of some more, um, some areas of more importance than others or more common relevance than others. Um, and then also took a bash, um, granted this is pretty high level at existing communications channels that each of these um, audience segments might be using. Um, separated these out into ones that are, are owned by that user segment itself. Obviously the package users themselves uh, or the, the, the package consumers don't have their own channels for discourse. Um, but then also um, those who are either making packages or package manager maintainers um, have, have channels that they run themselves. So um, really just using this as an initial starting point, hopefully for some further discussion. Um, in a further, in a, in a future world, um, I'd like to see some of these pain points up at the top here separated out into things that we could actually maybe use for like priority weighting or even generating user stories as time goes on. Um, so like I said, this is pretty, this is pretty high level and, and I would greatly appreciate any thoughts any of um, you all might have on next steps for this, you know, I've got some ideas, but I'd like to um, to get everybody else's thoughts as well and have a chance to look it over um, over the next couple of days if you get a chance. Um, so that link is in the document today's notes. Um, additionally, uh, get back into today's notes. Let's see what else I wrote. Um, so going on that, um, thank you so much, Andrew, for turning um, the cladistic tree into um, a flowchart because that was sort of next on my, my list of, of things to start visualizing. Um, I, I might want to take a look through the tree and sort of expand on that a little bit more as you've noted. Um, also, you'd also had, um, Andrew, you'd have your, your research on decentralized publishing um, piece that issue 52 
um, which I misquoted in the notes, but um, it might be interesting to pull that apart, um, segmenting by those top level um, segments of identity discovery and tooling to try to dig that into something that might turn, um, that, that might suggest um, future segmentation into um, defining individual problems that, that we could go a little bit further toward um, you know, separating out into yeah. issues for solving. So the discovery parts, it definitely the, the bits I wrote down were almost like <laughs> The, the kind of setting the scene it feels like most package managers currently lump all three of those things together yep. and for it, there's definitely some interesting use cases for saying like well what if you only just did one of these parts like what right. what does that open and kind of enable you to do or like does it need to be linked to something else yeah yeah and i i think i was particularly keying in on your um on your comments that we we're probably going to need to do a little bit more heavy duty solving for the discovery part of this. Um, and, and that at least is something that I am not lacking the technical expertise to be useful to help in. So that's something I'd, I'd like to dig in a little bit further, but um, I think sort of my next steps is to go through the, um, you know, those documents, those issues, and try to at least get something into, I don't know, a more, a more segmented format. And then we can talk about maybe how we want to represent that, maybe even within um, the package manager's repo, you know, maybe, maybe we actually want to sort of split these things out by topic. I'm not sure if that's too, too segmented at this point in time, but. Well, feel free to rip it to pieces. Uh, All right. Exactly what it's for. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, so, so I'll, I'll keep talking about that. Um, if I, if I ever get the car fixed, um, I will be in Vermont the rest of the afternoon helping some people defend their theses. Um, but if, if you need anything in a super hurry, um, you know, Slack on my phone or whatever. Okay. Thanks, guys. Is there anyone else? Got anything? Not in the dock. I think that's it. Any other business? Um. So I mentioned briefly, uh, kind of thinking about, uh, based off this kind of idea of what happens if you, if you can put a package manager in to break it into the pieces that it is kind of composed of. Generally, most package managers end up as, as combining them all together, often because they, the database that they use gives them almost all of those different functions built in uh, so it's quite easy to then go like oh well we can have our search and our resolution algorithm uh, and any kind of like mutable lists of updated things all from the same data source then that's really easy but if you try and break those indexes apart and put them on IPFS then you're like well I don't really need an index of 600,000 packages if I've already got 2,000 packages in my in my project, um, which then kind of led me down a path of the search and the actual kind of list of all available things doesn't necessarily have to be connected uh, with for with the uh, dependency resolution algorithm for a given project, uh, which kind of got me thinking about if you were to have for any project or even any person, they kind of have small localized groups of or chunks of dependency data that are relevant to them, metadata and uh, actual package contents. But that data isn't humongous. It's probably like under a gigabyte uh, for even for the biggest uh, kind of packages, or sorry, not packages, software projects. Uh, you could imagine the kind of thing that would end up wrapped up inside of a Docker image uh, with once it's all kind of been installed and compiled. That that kind of size of data becomes interesting because then uh, IPFS actually like can fairly easily move around and comprehend uh, small chunks of or groups of data 
rather than trying to say like, oh, you need to mirror the whole registry um, that you could potentially even say like, rather than being completely decentralized, if you had centralized services, you could almost say like, can you import my package dependency tree into the service that I want to start using? And it actually uploads the package data, metadata and like source code into a particular service without, and if it's all done via IPFS, you're essentially making pointers to snapshots of those, uh, like those pointers to the, the data that's specific to a given project. You could actually make a certain amount of portability rather than having to be pinned down to like, oh, well, for this to work, we're going to need to mirror a whole registry or at least to be able to proxy back through to the original registry. What would, what would it look like if you were to say, like, rather than just a lock file that contains uh, a manifest that points to some registry URLs, could you have kind of uh, either a file or some kind of archive that was the full a uh, pile of everything that you would need for a project without it being like installed into a Docker image. Um, not exactly sure what that looks like, but that feels like an interesting area to go when specifically related to IPFS because many of those chunks of data inside that, uh, that like archive for a given project would be shared between projects, especially for all the kind of popular bits of dependencies. So you potentially have uh, kind of similar users end up sharing a lot of their data and especially for people that are using the same kind of projects uh, without needing to have to rely on having the full list. And that still means you need a different service somewhere else to do search and updates uh, to be able to find new packages or to hear about updates to existing packages that you care about. But uh, it kind of, it means that you can slightly separate their concerns a little bit rather than having to kind of solve all three discovery problems at the same time. So I was thinking I'd, I'd write some of that up um, and try and connect it with some of the lists of problems um, that Jessica has been pulling apart as well, because that feels like a good place to, to go back and have a, bit more of a think about. Oh, go ahead, Jim. Oh, um, just, uh, you were talking about, um, I think it would be actually sort of interesting to have a service that sort of tracked, like, like a, 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 as a coder, like as you're working on code, what your live set of dependencies are on the code that you're working on over time. Like, like last week, these are the dependencies I was using this week. Is, you know, what was I working on six months ago? And like, if you could sort of like track the dependencies that were sort of hot at that time. And that actually has some interesting capabilities too, if you were actually sort of willing to share that, you know, maybe in a private setting with some other people, because you could actually do sort of like TF, IDF, sort of natural language processing style matching and like actually say, hey, you know, you're working on this thing six months ago. Um, somebody just started working on, you know, similar set of dependencies. Um, maybe you should go talk to them. Um, it's sort of novel use for this data, but. Yeah, having that, that kind of maybe opt in to sharing a certain amount of that data at a high level would uh, allow you to connect with other people, especially if you're saying like, oh, well, I'm working on an open source project, so like I'm up for for sharing this more than say a, a closed source uh, private project. Yeah, like it might even work like with even within like, you know, like protocol apps, like we're, we're, what we're doing because people shift around from different projects and you're working on a bit of code that has a lot of similar dependencies as something that somebody else worked on previously, but you, you just didn't even know that they were working on that. And then it, they could, just, you know, it, it could be like, hey, you should probably know that this person was working on something. It, it, like you, it, it wouldn't know that the actual code is the same, but it would know that you're working with the same set of libraries. Jessica? 
So this is a little bit more of a, an administrative or, or GitHub hygiene question, but um, going on from your document and, and having these sort of, I, I really like the high level um, categorizations of dependencies, discovering and tooling. Um, in terms of like segmenting those out into problem statements or, or so forth that we wanna discuss in, in more detail, um, and then maybe tying that to some visually based documentation. Um, what would be the best way for us to go forward in our existing package manager SIG repo? Any suggestions on that or any ways that people have found to be helpful in the past? Yeah, our repo setup is not particularly good for that kind of collaboration yeah. right now because we're yeah. doing. We're just Everything. throwing a whole bunch of things and issues and sort of letting them shake out. But I think we're at that point where things are maybe starting to shake out into, into more discrete categories. So I, I, I guess I was just wondering before we went forward with that, um, if you had any, if, if anybody my, had thoughts on the best organization. My initial thought would be to then to start to build up probably in the GitHub repo, but it would also work in Google Docs to start building up maybe like three or four files that break these things down into chunks and actually then for we have issues for like there's a chunk missing here uh let's go like either someone open a pull request and can like have collaboration on it or just dive in and start editing it it doesn't feel like we need a lot of process around it we just need kind of to end up with something that's a little easier to collaborate rather than editing the content of issues Right, right, exactly. Which is getting getting the issues to cluster, or you know, um, maybe maybe we could think about like how how we might want to use like labeling, perhaps um, might be another way to attack that. But I'll have a think as well. But yeah, yes. Sorry. We could could we turn on the wiki for the package managers repo? GitHub wikis are a bit, you know, they're lacking in a lot of features, but it might be might be more pleasant than using issues. Cool. Good point. I have never used a GitHub Wiki, but if it also makes it really easy for folks who come and in, index in on our package managers repo as package manager maintainers or users or people who are generally excited and they can be like, well, I can tell you about the thing that's happening in Maven because I happen to be in the Maven community and here's, here's my dollop of knowledge that I'm gonna add really easily. Like, that'd be real cool. I think that would help us scale out our contributors a little more. So maybe the that we might want to do with that is make sure we're doing some kind of a um, a backup. I know it is supposed to be Git based, but GitHub has not touched the wiki in like five years, and they have no spam protection. They have no like ability to lock it down particularly well, so, or to revert changes. You literally have to like clone the wiki repo locally, edit it, push it back up again to get the history properly. Um, so. Right now, no one really notices the wiki exists, so I'm, I'm not too uh, concerned about that. All right, so I will I will dig into maybe better ways to start organizing our, our larger overarching problems now that they're starting to get separated out into larger overarching problems. Cool. Oh, right. also one other little thing. I have a call with uh, Jim uh tomorrow i think is it um to discuss some ideas for the uh the mini projects um work that he's doing and potentially uh like bouncing some ideas around related to package management i don't know if you want to talk more about that jim um yeah if anybody's got some ideas um shoot, shoot it at us or there's a integration mini projects um um, I'll just get the your offer it and uh, feel free to just drop ideas and things into this um, into the issues there and uh, you know they don't have to be a fully thought out it can just be really half-baked ideas just put them in there and uh, some of them we might elaborate into being uh, like a one-week project and uh, even if I don't end up doing them, um, it's good to have them there and then other people can sort of pull them off uh, and work on them.
Cool. I think we're out of time. Uh, so I will stop recording this now and we can move on to the rest of our day slash evenings. Uh, thank you very much for attending the Package Manager Special Interest Group Weekly Catch-Up for the 7th of May 2019. See you all on the internet. Bye. Bye.